live coverage for the Formula 3 Asian Championship. This will be our second race of this weekend, and we're going to start the race at this very sunny day at Qing International Circuit. Yesterday, for race one, we had a very dramatic ending with the, the uh, race leader, Jack Duhan, and uh, got a tire puncture in the very last lap, and which means his title rival, Joey Alderson, uh, got 30, uh, win the race and uh, got 35 uh, points ahead of Jack. And the will Duhan recovered from this, uh, this race and let's go and find out. But uh, before we do, let's have a look of yesterday's highlight. 各位观众，那么即将进行的是国际汽联亚洲三级方程式锦标赛。这个最后一个比赛周，第二场的比赛了。那么在昨天的比赛当中呢，Jack Everybody and welcome along back to this Chang International Circuit in Buriram, Thailand for race 14 of the 2020 F3 Asian Championship. And as we saw from the highlights just now, a dramatic ending in yesterday's race 13 with Jack Doohan, the pole sitter, the man who had led all the way every single lap on the very last lap of the race, suffered a puncture and that meant that his title rival Joey Alders, who had been in second position, came through and inherited the victory. And Joey Alders, the Dutch driver, now with a very healthy 36-point lead over Jack Doohan in the Drivers' Championship. But it's not over yet. Two races this season still to go. Race 14 now. Race 15 will come a little bit later on today. But we're worried about race 14 now and whether Jack Doohan can recover from yesterday's misfortune and overhaul that lead that Joey Alders now has. 36 points. But Jack Doohan as he was yesterday, sits on pole position today, and he'll be hoping to get a good start as he did yesterday. Confirmation there of the point standings. Joey Alders top with 240 points, then Jack Doohan with 204 points. Nikita Mazepin in third place with 174 points. He did have an outside chance of the title before yesterday's race, but it's now a two-horse race between Joey Alders and Jack Doohan. And in the team's championship, Black Arts Racing, Joey Alders' team, managing to take the lead over Pinnacle Motorsport. They were absolutely together before yesterday's race, but that misfortune for Doohan also spelt trouble for Pinnacle Motorsport. Doohan's team and Black Arts Racing and Joey Alders into the lead now. 333 points for Black Arts Racing, but it's not over yet. Plenty of racing still to be had this weekend, and the cars just filing up on the grid now. It's a gorgeous day. Here in Buriram, we're about 600 kilometers northeast of the capital, Bangkok. 
This Chang International circuit, built in 2014, it's a FIA Grade 1 circuit, the only one in Thailand to receive the top certification from the FIA, motorsports governing body. It's hosted many top international races, the Thailand Motorcycle Grand Prix since 2017. Also hosts a round of Japan's premier Super GT championship and has also hosted rounds of the WTCC. So plenty of international motorsport action here at this Chang International Circuit. And of course, this weekend, it's all about the 2020 F3 Asian Championship. This is the final round of the 2020 Championship. Remember, five rounds, three races at each round, so 15 races altogether. We've had 13, and now it's time for race 14. Race 15 will come later on today. That is number 11, Ukio Sasahara, the Japanese driver. He had a tough time in yesterday's race, ran into trouble at the beginning, but uh, he's second on the grid for today's race, giving us a little wave there. And the Japanese driver will want to end the season on a high. Sasahara, the uh, 2019 F3 Asian champion, so he's a guest driver in this year's series, not eligible to score points, but nevertheless, good for him to get some running in these European winter months. Not traditionally a huge amount of motorsport going on in the winter months. Far too cold to be racing in much of Europe, but no such problems here in Thailand, nor in Malaysia, and nor in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, where this championship has also raced this year. So Jack Doohan on pole position. Ukiyo Sasahara, the Japanese driver, alongside him on row one. Well, yesterday it was cruel luck for Jack Doohan, led all the way before that puncture on the very last lap, dropped him to eighth, and he's down there with Feline now. So Jack, starting from pole position again, and uh, has you recovered from yesterday's incident? Yeah, definitely. Um, yesterday's in the past, we can't change anything. It's out of our control, so we'll focus on today and do the best we can to try and win both races. Um, and yeah, just head forward and hope for the best. 刚刚我问到呢，Jack他在呃，因为他昨天呢有发生了一个事故，他说他他有没有恢复这个重新从这个头位发车，他说呢他也是希望能今天吧，今天的比赛跑好就好了，他不会再想太多。Back to you guys. Well, Jack Doohan, fairly softly spoken young man, doesn't use three words when one would do, but there's certainly a steely resolve about him, and he will want to put yesterday's bitter disappointment behind him and concentrate on winning the race. All he has to do, really, is win today and win later on this afternoon in race 15. So no pressure, really. All he has to do is win, and all Joey Alders has to do is keep scoring points. The Dutchman has a 36-point lead at the moment, and that means he doesn't need to try to win this race. He just needs to keep on scoring points. And uh, there are plenty of championship permutations in terms of how the points might uh, play out. But I think the most important thing to remember is that even if Jack Doohan wins this race this morning, if Joey Alders can finish in second position, that will be enough to secure him the 2020 F3 Asian Championship title. So Joey Alders, who will start in third position, directly behind Jack Doohan on the grid, he doesn't need to be trying to win the race. He's just going to want to score some good points and do his own race And he's there starting from that third position. Yesterday he started fifth and managed to get up to second very quickly after a very good start. He'll be wanting to do that again today. And we'll hear from him now because he's there ready to talk to Feline on the grid. So Joey, started from right behind your title rival Jack Duhan, but you have an advantage of leading the championship. What will be your approach for this race? Uh, well, yeah, so we can get all into the numbers and the calculations. So if you want to finish there, then where I need to finish. I think I just need to win and then uh, I'm safe uh, for sure. So uh, that's the plan for today. And uh, yeah, we'll see. 那么刚刚我问到Joy呢,因为他现在是虽然他从这个Jack后面发车,不过他现在依然领跑着积分榜,那么他自己呢在这场比赛当中呢有什么样的一个计划,他提到呢他还是希望可以就是能够赢得比
Well, just to show that you never know what a racing driver's thinking, I thought that Joey Alders might be a bit more circumspect, but there you go. You heard it straight from the horse's mouth. He's out to win this race. And if he does that, he would certainly be crowned champion. So that would certainly be a very nice way for him to round off the championship. Everybody's still on the grid. Engineers, mechanics, just getting ready. Filing off the grid now, you see those tyres being pushed away. No danger of uh, any wet running this weekend. It's glorious sunshine here in Buriram, and that's what we want to see. Jack Doohan on the right-hand side of the grid. Ukiyo Sasahara on the left in second position. Joey Alders, as we just heard, he's in third position, directly behind Jack Doohan. And I wonder what his strategy will be at the start. Yes, we heard from him just now, and he wants to win the race. But uh, I'm sure he's also got more than one eye on the overall championship. And he won't want to get into any trouble in the opening few corners. He won't want to be squabbling for position. I should think he'll just want to stay well out of the way and do his own race. Jamie Chadwick is fourth on the grid. And she had a good run yesterday. Ended up finishing second. That's her highest position of the season. Jamie Chadwick, the British driver, the W Series champion who's really improved as the season has gone on. And we've also got the Masters category to think about, and Thomas Ludi is currently leading that from Paul Wong. And he's now down there with Feline. So Thomas, and uh, you are leading the, uh, uh, so you are leading the amateur classification. So, uh, but your master classification, and you are very close with Paul, right? So what will be your approach for this race? Well, keep it very clean, have a good start and then just try to make no mistakes and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have the pace to be ahead. Thank you. A good race. Ah, 刚刚我问到 Thomas 了，他现在是在这个 Master， 就是这个大师榜的一个就是首位的名次。不过他和这个 Paul 之间呢，积分也是非常的相近的。他说他希望有一个非常干净的一场比赛，而且有一个非常好的起步，保持一个好的自己的一个节奏就可以了。Back to you guys. Well, we've been focusing a lot on the battle at the front of the field, but it's also easy to forget that there's another classification, the Masters classification, further down the field. We don't tend to see too much of Thomas Ludi and Paul Wong in the Masters category, but there they are having their own private battle, and very close it is in the Masters category as well, because Thomas Ludi, who we had just heard from, he leads with 204 points, Paul Wong with 195 points, so just nine points behind, and remember, 50 points still up for grabs over these two races. So Thomas Ludi and Paul Wong having their own private battle a little bit further down the field, and it'll be interesting to see how that progresses as the race goes on. Everybody heading off the grid now. The race getting ready to start. And plenty of questions still to be asked. Can Jack Doohan overhaul Joey Alders? Or will the Dutchman be crowned 2020 F3 Asian champion this morning? There is Paul Wong. And of course, he's got to overhaul Thomas Ludi in the Masters category. So Jack Doohan on pole position. Ukiyo Sasahara in second position on the grid. Joey Alders third and Jamie Chadwick in fourth place. This Chang International Circuit, 4.554 kilometers long. It's a relatively short lap, certainly shorter than the Sepang International Circuit in Malaysia that we were at just last weekend. Plenty of good overtaking opportunities. It's a nice wide track as well, especially when you take into account that these uh, F3 cars, quite a bit smaller than some of the uh, some of the cars towards the sharper end of uh, motorsports open wheel ladder. So obviously narrow cars means plenty of room on the track to catch and pass and go side by side. And this track really does tend to produce lots of close racing. A good overtaking opportunity at turn one, the right hander, and then we have a very, very long straight with a kink in it before the 180 degree right hander at turn three. And we saw plenty of action there in yesterday's race. Turn 12, the final corner that you see at the top of your screen there, that's also a hard braking zone and potential for some overtaking there as the cars pull away now on the formation lap and you'll see them weaving from side to side just like Yukio Sasahara is doing there in second position and that is to warm the tyres and warm the brakes because those tyres and brakes need to be nice and warm. 
Otherwise, they don't work at all. You'll run the risk of locking a tire, spinning off, ending up in the dust, and you don't want that at all. But uh, this is quite a new track built in 2014, designed by the uh, famous German architect Hermann Tilke, who's designed actually all the other circuits on the 2020 F3 Asian calendar in Sepang in Dubai, and of course the magnificent Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi, all designed by Hermann Tilke, who's designed so many of the, uh, the world's top racing circuits that have been built in the last 15 or 20 years or so. And one of the features of modern tracks like this, and you can see there, is the amount of tarmac runoff there. You can see the gravel in the foreground there, but there's a lot of tarmac before there, and that means uh, that the cars, if they do happen to run wide or put uh, four wheels off the track, it does give them an opportunity to recover. So there you see the cars all weaving this way and that. And uh, let's have a look at the grid now. Confirmation that Jack Doohan again on pole position. Jamie Chadwick fourth on the grid today and Pietro Fittipaldi in fifth position. This, the formation lap, and very important for the cars and drivers to warm their tires and warm the brakes and get everything ready for half an hour's hard racing here at Buriram. And Pietro Fittipaldi, the Brazilian driver, he's currently fourth in the championship standings and having a private battle with Jamie Chadwick. Fittipaldi, the Brazilian driver who finished third in yesterday's race. Nikita Mazepin had been classified second, but he took a five second penalty, so he dropped to fifth in the final classification. And that meant that Jamie Chadwick, who did stand on the third step on the podium, was moved up to second place. Pietro Fittipaldi moves up to third position. And Mikhail Belov, the Russian driver, making his first appearance of the 2020 F3 Asian Championship season, finished in fourth position. So a good first showing for Belov, the Russian driver, who uh, certainly showed that he's a, a tough competitor, had some good battles in the, middle of the, in the middle of the pack with the likes of Fittipaldi and Chadwick and uh, Alessio De Leda, the Italian driver, who finished yesterday in seventh position. That's his highest finish of the year. He ran as high as fourth as well. Ultimately slipped back to seventh in the final rankings, but that's certainly De Leda's most competitive showing of the season so far. So nice to see some drivers that uh, we haven't seen too much of at the sharp end of the grid so far this year. Nice to see them further up the field today. And that is the 33 car of Yu Kanemaru, the Japanese driver. He's starting in ninth position today. And his highlight of the year, without a shadow of a doubt, was race six in Dubai when he took victory by a really astounding margin, really, of over 20 seconds. Very rare that we see such a large margin of victory in such a short race as the F3 Asian Championship races. Of course, only half an hour long. And Yu Kanemaru really had the bit between his teeth in Dubai in what were very tricky conditions. A lot of wet, dry running. And of course, it doesn't rain very often in Dubai, so uh, a lot of standing water on the track. But Yu Kanemaru in race six really did deal with the conditions fantastically well, better than anybody else. And he starts ninth today. But that man, Jack Doohan, and it really, I've said it before, but it does bear repeating, really hugely disappointing, absolutely cruel luck yesterday for Jack Doohan. He dominated proceedings, qualified on pole position, led every single lap, apart from the last one when he had that unfortunate puncture and that allowed Joey Alders to come through and inherit the win. And Jack Doohan really was a man on a mission. He really had the wind in his sails. He was coming here off the back of three victories in three races at Sepang. He'd really closed the gap in the championship on Joey Alders. And it really was a cruel blow to see him lose victory yesterday in such a manner. But he's back on pole position today and talking to him on the grid, he certainly does seem very focused and very ready and very determined to do his best again and try to win the race. That's all he can do really, just keep on winning and hope that Joey Alders doesn't finish in a position that would see him gain enough points to win the championship. The Dutchman 36 points ahead of Jack Doohan and 50 points still available over these two races. 25 points for a win. So still plenty to play for. 
and the cars coming round now. This is the approach to the final corner, turn 12. We saw plenty of action here in yesterday's race. There is Jamie Chadwick, the number 15 car. She starts in fourth position. With Joey Alders third and Pietro Fittipaldi fifth. Fittipaldi in that very distinctive red car. A lot of these cars look very similar and uh, it can sometimes be very difficult to work out who's who when you're looking from a distance, but there's no mistaking Fittipaldi for anybody else. He's got that very distinctive livery. And he starts, of course, in fifth position today. So the cars all forming up on the grid now. Jack Doohan on the right, Ukiyo Sasahara on the left. Those red lights will go on, and when they go off, we will be racing here in Buriram. The tail enders just forming up on their grid slots now. And you can hear the engines revving. Everybody's ready for another hard race here in the F3 Asian Championship. The red lights are on and now they're off and we're racing again here at the Chang International Circuit in Buriram. And it's a good start from Jack Doohan. He started as he meant to go on. Sasahara, I think, has uh, held on to his second position. Jamie Chadwick, it looks as if, is in third place and being challenged now by Pietro Fittipaldi. So the two of them going side by side and Fittipaldi makes it through into third place. And now where is Joey Alders? Because he started in third place. It looks as if he's been crowded out. Joey Alders is, uh, I think, down in about fifth position. There he is. Yes, the 23 car, Joey Alders in fifth place. And he's, uh, he's dropped back from third. Now that's really good news for Jack Doohan because Jack Doohan has got away well from his pole position. He still leads the race and Joey Alders down into fifth position. And... Uh, there is Chadwick going side by side to, to, with Fittipaldi and Fittipaldi goes around the outside. The two of them get very close to touching there but it's still good hard clean racing. Fittipaldi holds on to that third place and uh, Chadwick it looked as if was under pressure by Joey Alders there. She lost out a little bit, had to maybe get out of the throttle to avoid contact with Fittipaldi. The three cars going side by side now and Chadwick in the middle there. Joey Alders is the other one. I can't see who the third car is but uh, three of them going side by side there. Tremendous racing on this first lap. One of them locks up there but at the front, Jack Doohan is still leading the race. Sasahara is still in second place. Fittipaldi third. Chadwick, I think, is in fourth position. Yes, Chadwick in fourth. Joey Alders in fifth place. There is Fittipaldi, the third place man. And as they go across the line, let's have a look at where everybody is. Jack Doohan first. Sasahara second. Fittipaldi third. Chadwick fourth. Belov is up into fifth place. And Joey Alders down to sixth position. Not a good start for Joey Alders. And that is good news for Jack Doohan because if he wins this race and uh, Joey Alders is down in sixth position, that means that the championship will still go to the final race here this afternoon. Sixth place, not enough for Joey Alders to win the championship this morning in race 14. There he is, understandably taking it slow, taking it cautiously. He doesn't want to do anything too rash, but there he is down in sixth position. Well, he's lost a few places on this opening lap, Joey Alders, but he's still in the race. And as long as he's still in the race, he's going to have every chance of making those positions back. Remember, he started fifth yesterday and worked his way up to second very quickly. So we know that Joey Alders can work his way through the traffic when he needs to. Jamie Chadwick in fourth place. Mikhail Belov, the Russian driver. This is his first appearance in the uh, F3 Asian Championship this year here in Buriram. He didn't feature in any of the other races, but... Uh, Going strongly here in fifth position this weekend. Jack Doohan still in the lead. He's doing everything that he needs to do. And Ukiyo Sasahara in second position. Doohan coming round turn 12. The final right-hander there to start another lap, lap two. So Sasahara, uh, Sasahara in second place, Fittipaldi third, Chadwick fourth, Belov fifth, Joey Alders still only in sixth position, Yu Kanemaru seventh, Mazepin in eighth, Tommy Smith ninth, Yu Kwai in tenth place, Alessio Deleda in eleventh, and Thomas Ludi ahead of Paul Wong, the two of them at the back of the field in the Masters category, but Thomas Ludi still ahead of his rival Paul Wong. And that is Yu Kanemaru and uh, Nikita Mazepin just having their own private battle. That's the battle for seventh place there. Mazepin looking to make up for lost time. He finished 
well, second on the road in yesterday's race, but had a penalty, dropped to fifth, but he's weaving this way and that, trying to get past Yu Kanemaru. But no way past just yet. Mazepin started only eight, but there he goes up the inside, the two of them side by side, and Mazepin looks as if he's taken that position, has he? But uh, Yu Kanemaru's got the inside for this next corner. Mazepin goes off the track as he overtakes Yu Kanemaru, so up into seventh position. Plenty of runoff area there. You can see one of the uh, cars going all four wheels off the track there. And they don't want to be doing that too often because the stewards will take a rather dim view of that. And I wonder if Mazepin might have to give that position back if he gained an advantage by going all four wheels off the track. But uh, anyway, for the time being, he is ahead of Yu Kanemaru up into seventh place. A slight lock up there, just a little puff of tyre smoke as he breaks hard for that uh, tight right-hander at turn 12, the final corner. And there is number 11, Ukio Sasahara, and uh, Pietro Fittipaldi now challenging Sasahara. He was just half a second behind as they went over the start-finish line, and I think he's a bit closer than that now. He's getting in the slipstream of the Japanese driver. Fittipaldi goes to the outside, Sasahara on the inside, going defensive, and the Japanese lives to fight another day in second place. But Pietro Fittipaldi really uh, having a good race so far. The Brazilian driver, his highest finish so far in the championship, a couple of third place finishes. And uh, he's challenging now for second place. Remember, Sasahara is a guest driver, so he's not eligible to score points. So if the, if the race was to finish as it is at the moment, Sasahara would, would be removed from the standings and it would be Fittipaldi who would be classified second and everybody else would move up one position. So Sasahara not eligible for points, remember. Very important to consider in the uh, championship terms as well, because, of course, that means that Joey Alders, who is currently showing in sixth place, would in fact get the points for fifth. And that could have a significant bearing on the championship. But anyway, Sasahara is second on the road. And no doubt who's first on the road. It's this man, Jack Doohan, starting from his pole position, as he did yesterday, and continuing on his merry way. And he, I'm sure, will be hoping that he doesn't run into the same misfortune as he had yesterday. Cruel luck for Jack Doohan, who led every lap of the race, but it just goes to show that you never quite know what happens in motorsport. Absolutely anything can happen, and it usually does. But Jack Doohan still leading the race, 1.8 seconds ahead of Sasahara now, who's starting to back the pack up a little bit, leading a train of cars now. There's Fittipaldi third, Chadwick fourth, Belov fifth, and Joey Alders a little bit further behind in sixth place. But second, third, fourth and fifth absolutely together. Belov looking as if he's uh, going for a look up the inside of Jamie Chadwick. The Russian driver getting close behind the Briton there as they come through the left-hand kink at turn four. There's Fittipaldi in third place and that distinctive red car. Chadwick fourth and Belov fifth. This is the double left-hander at turns five and six. Chadwick going a little wide there and Belov having a look up the inside but not close enough and uh, very difficult to overtake at turn five and six anyway. Lots of uh, mid-speed corners, a tight twisty section in the middle of the circuit here. Turns five, six, seven, eight. This is the double right-hander at eight and nine. And then here is turn 10, the fast left-hander. Not much elevation here at the Chang International Circuit. It's a fairly level circuit, fairly level track, and uh, lots of interesting corners. Plenty of overtaking opportunities, and Belov going for a look up the inside. That's kind of a half-hearted move there. He wants to be careful that he doesn't snag Jamie Chadwick's left rear tyre. But Belov looking very racy behind the British driver Chadwick as they come over the start-finish line to start lap six. And he'll want to get good drive here because... Uh, a good exit from turn one is very, very important because then you've got this long, long straight at full throttle and a good exit can really help you. Jamie Chadwick still holding on to that fourth place, but Belov having a look at the inside, Chadwick having to go a little bit defensive and that might have compromised her exit here. But Belov not quite close enough to take advantage just yet. Chadwick still in fourth place, Belov still in fifth position. Fittipaldi still third. Sasahara second and Doohan still very much in the lead. Joey Alders still in sixth position, not making too much of an impression just yet. 13 and a half minutes of the race still to go. But this is the battle for fourth place and Belov goes a little bit wide there and that's given Joey Alders the opportunity to close up. 
as they go through the right-hander at turn eight. Joey Alders right on the gearbox of Belov, the Russian driver there, the, who just uh, got a little bit wide and lost a bit of time behind Jamie Chadwick, and that has brought Joey Alders a lot closer to the rear of Belov. And the two of them coming up to the final corner, turn 12 now. Belov, number 57, Joey Alders, number 23. They're coming over the start-finish line now to start lap seven. Jack Dewan still in the lead, two seconds ahead of Sasahara, who is uh, seven-tenths of a second ahead of Fittipaldi. So the, the Brazilian driver falling back a little bit, not really close enough to Sasahara to uh, have a serious look for a way past the Japanese driver. But Jack Dewan still keeping uh, Sasahara and the rest of the field at arm's length. Two seconds now the gap. Sasahara, Fittipaldi, Chadwick and Belov and Joey Alders very close together. Lots of close racing here with just 12 minutes still to go. Further down the field, Mazepin still in seventh place. Yu Kanemaru eighth, Tommy Smith in ninth place. Yu Kwai rounding out the top ten. Alessio Deleda in eleventh. Twelfth and first in the Masters category is Thomas Ludi. And he's just ahead of Paul Wong, 13th overall and bringing up the rear and second in the Masters category. So Jack Doohan still leading the race. There he is. Sasahara still second, Fittipaldi still third. And of course, this is the last weekend, the last round of the 2020 F3 Asian Championship season. And uh, of course, this means that the drivers in the F3 Championship this year, because the championship ends so early in February, this is well before the start of the season elsewhere. So that means that the drivers can compete in two championships in one single year. And that really helps them to maximize their FIA super license points. There's plenty of super license points up for grabs. And of course, if you want to race in Formula One, the pinnacle of open wheel motorsport, you need an FIA super license. And with the points on offer, not just in this championship, but in other championships elsewhere in the world, it really gives the drivers a good opportunity to maximize their super license points. And not only can they compete in this championship, they can also then begin another championship when the European season starts in March and April. Not much racing going on in Europe in January and February. It's a bit cold to be doing that, but there's no such problem here in Thailand. Glorious sunshine and fantastic weather to go motor racing. And of course, the drivers, uh, many of them finalizing their plans for later on in the year. Nikita Mazepin, the Russian driver, who's already raced in the FIA F2 category. That's the category just below F1. And he'll be uh, continuing in F2 this year with the high-tech team that he's racing with here in Asian F3. High-tech moving up into Formula 2 for the first time in 2020. And Nikita Mazepin will be with them as they do so. Jack Doohan, meanwhile, the 17-year-old leading this race, and he is set to make his debut in the FIA F3 Championship. Jack Doohan, just 17 years of age, and he's clearly shown in this FIA F3 Asian Championship that he is very much one for the future. Five wins so far, and he and Joey Alders, in fact, have won 10 of the 13 races that we've had so far this year. So Jack Doohan still 36 points behind Joey Alders in the championship after that unfortunate puncture yesterday. And even if he does ultimately lose out to the Dutch driver, I think Jack Doohan will have impressed a lot of people with his approach. He's clearly got a, a bright future ahead of him. And uh, look at this now, 57, Belov right behind Jamie Chadwick as they went through the, uh, the right-hander there. And I wonder if Belov is going to have a look as they come through the kink. In fact, he's going right around the outside. This is turn four. We haven't seen too many people trying to overtake here, but Belov clearly not one to be trifled with. He's still going, still trying to get around the outside of Jamie Chadwick. What a move from Belov. Absolutely incredible. Don't think we've seen anybody going around the outside of not only turn four, but the double left-hander at turns five and six. And Belov up into uh, fourth position now. Fantastic move from the Russian driver. Jamie Chadwick down to fifth place. Wow, hugely brave from Belov. We've seen yesterday, he certainly uh, is one that doesn't fear a bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat, going very 
very well against his co fellow competitors and that was a fantastic move around the outside of Jamie Chadwick there from Belov and he's now close behind Fittipaldi and the Russian driver clearly a man in a hurry as they go across the start finish line once again to start lap 10 with just eight minutes of the race still to go. Jack Doohan still leading the race as he did yesterday. Ukiyo Sasahara in second position. 1.7 seconds the gap now. So Jack Doohan just managing the gap there. Pietro Fittipaldi still in third place. Belov up into fourth. Chadwick down to fifth. And Joey Alders still in sixth position. So Joey Alders not really making much of an impression, but he's closing up a little bit on the Belov there. Seven and a half minutes to go. So not too much time for Joey Alders to make much more of an impression, but there's still a bit of racing to go. And as yesterday taught us, you never know quite what might happen. Jack Doohan in the lead. Sasahara second. Fittipaldi in third place. Fittipaldi, another one who's got his plans sorted for 2020. He's going to race in the Japanese Super Formula Championship. That is Japan's premier open wheel racing category and a very competitive uh, racing category it is too popular not just with uh, drivers from japan but several international drivers of very high renown have competed to a high degree in super formula the formula one driver pierre gasly the multiple 24 hours of le mans winner andre lotterer just two of the famous names to have competed in super formula and pietro fittipaldi will be racing in that championship this year he'll also be continuing with his role as uh, the reserve driver for the Haas Formula One team. So Fittipaldi, one of the drivers racing today who's got experience of racing Formula One machinery. Nikita Mazepin also has uh, completed mileage for the Racing Point Formula One team as a test and reserve driver. And Formula One is where a lot of these young drivers will want to end up. The Asian F3 Championship, just one rung on the, rotors, on the uh, international motorsport ladder as uh, Mikhail Belov getting very close now behind Pietro Fittipaldi. This is the battle for third place and Belov looking very racy here today. Of course, yesterday his first race in the 2020 F3 Asian Championship and uh, he uh, went pretty well, ended up finishing in fourth place, a very solid performance in his first outing of the year and he's now challenging Pietro Fittipaldi for that third position. Jamie Chadwick in fifth place and Joey Alders in sixth. So third, fourth, fifth and sixth absolutely together. There is Nikita Mazepin in seventh place. He and Yu Kanemaru having their own private battle there. The Japanese driver right behind the Russian in eighth position. But Fittipaldi still holding on to third place. Belov getting very close behind as they go through the right-hander there at turn nine. This is turn ten, the left-hander. The little kink there at turn 11 and then... Uh, Working their way down to this turn 12 here. Is Belov going to have a look? He is, you know, going up the inside. And Belov goes up the inside and into third place. But has he gone wide? Fittipaldi comes back at him. Belov goes defensive, pushes Fittipaldi out wide. And it looks as if the Russian driver has made that stick. So Belov up into third position now. A great race from the Russian. He's really going well. Making his way up from seventh place on the grid. Now to sit in third position. But Fittipaldi... Is going to come back at him. Belov having to go defensive. Fittipaldi gets in the slipstream on this long straight and they go side by side. Fittipaldi around the outside as they come to the right hander at turn three. Belov holds on to the position, but can he hold on again on the exit? Because Fittipaldi went deep into the corner. That gives him a faster line out of it. And look at Joey Alders behind. Is Joey Alders going to be overtaking Jamie Chadwick? They go side by side. Great racing here with just four minutes to go. Fittipaldi weaving this way and that, trying to force Belov into a mistake. But the Russian driver not to be denied, holding firm onto that third place as they go through the left-hander at turn five. Now, did Joey Alders make it past Jamie Chadwick? Hard to see at the moment. I think Chadwick has held on to fifth place. And Joey Alders still in sixth position. Let's have a look as they come through the right-hander here. It's Belov in third, Fittipaldi fourth. Chadwick still in fifth position. And uh, yes, Joey Alders still in sixth place. So the Dutch driver not making significant headway. Just three and a half minutes to go now. And uh, Joey Alders needs to get a bit of a move on if he's going to move up the field and score more of those all-important championship points. But Belov in third place, Fittipaldi in fourth, Chadwick in fifth, 
and Joey Alders still in sixth position. But Jack Doohan still in the lead. Ukiyo Sasahara is still in seventh place. The gap at the front has come down to just seven tenths of a second, and you can see visually how much closer the gap is now. Jack Doohan's last lap a 133.7, Ukiyo Sasahara a 133.1. So Sasahara took six tenths of a second out of Jack Doohan on that last lap. We're just seeing also that uh, a 10 second time penalty for car number 57, and that is Michael Belov, the Russian driver. So that is, and there's a puncture there, and that is, now who is that? Is that Jack Doohan again with a puncture on his right rear tire? I can't see who that is. It is. It's the number seven, Jack Doohan again. I do not believe this. Exactly the same thing has happened in yesterday's race. Jack Doohan. Oh, well, absolutely dismal luck for the Australian driver. Again, exactly as happened in yesterday's race. Jack Doohan winning the race comfortably and with a right rear puncture. And that is dropping him well out of contention. And there's no doubt about it now. Jack Doohan finishing well down the order. And that means that Joey Alders is going to win the 2020 F3 Asian Championship. But that is not the manner in which we wanted to see. Disappointing. Well, you can hardly put into words how that must feel for Jack Doohan. Because he led today's race. He led yesterday's race. Unbelievably appalling luck for the young Australian driver. And that means Sasahara takes the lead of the race. We saw him closing up on Jack Doohan in the last lap. He took six tenths of a second out of him. And, well, uh, I hardly know what to say now. That's uh, absolutely appalling luck for Jack Doohan. He must be absolutely gutted. But uh, meanwhile, at the front of the race, Sasahara takes the lead. And, of course, as the guest driver, that means that uh, Michael Belov, the Russian driver, will be net winning the race but of course he's got that 10 second time penalty so if things stand the way they currently are it may be that Pietro Fittipaldi is going to be classified as the race winner and it's going to be standing on the top step of the podium let's have a look there is Jack Doohan coming into the pits that right rear tire you can see there absolutely to shreds just running on the rim of the wheel there and uh, well absolutely appalling luck for Jack Doohan I hardly know what to say heart really goes out to him because uh, he's driven absolutely faultlessly all weekend and indeed all season long winning five races and he's really ultimately he's not going to win the championship now but uh, he's certainly won the hearts and minds of many people not just this weekend but all season long he's driven fantastically well Sasahara coming round now to start another lap I should think this will be the last but one lap. We haven't seen the last lap board coming out just yet, so uh, Sasahara carrying on. There will be one lap after this, I think. So Sasahara leading the race. Belov now in second place. Fittipaldi in third. Chadwick fourth. Joey Alders in fifth position. Mazepin in sixth. Yu Kanemaru in seventh place. Tommy Smith up into eighth. Alessio Deleda in ninth and Yu Kwai rounding out the top 10. In the Masters category, it's still Thomas Ludi ahead of Paul Wong. So he is going to extend his lead, Thomas Ludi, over Paul Wong. And there is Pietro Fittipaldi. He's in third position on track at the moment, but with Sasahara not eligible for points and Belov facing a 10-second penalty, it could be that Pietro Fittipaldi will be classified the winner of this race. We'll have to wait and see once the race finishes and uh, everything settles down. There you see confirmation that this is indeed the last lap. So Sasahara coming round. He will cross the line first, Ukiyo Sasahara, last year's champion, of course, not eligible for points in this year's championship, just competing as a guest driver. Michael Belov in second place, but he's got a 10-second penalty. Now, by my reckoning, that will drop Belov to around about sixth place in the final reckoning. But uh, here comes Ukiyo Sasahara round the final corner, and Ukiyo Sasahara takes the chequered flag and finishes first here in race 14 at Buriram. Michael Belov, the Russian driver, finishing in second place. Fittipaldi finishes third. And I think that means that Fittipaldi will be classified the winner of this race. Jamie Chadwick will be classified in second place, and Joey Alders, the new champion, will be classified in third position. 
Well, drama again here at Buriram. You never quite know what's going to happen in motorsport, and uh, bitter, bitter disappointment for Jack Doohan again. Joey Alders, congratulations to the Dutch driver. He now takes the 2020 F3 Asian Championship title. Ukio Sasahara finishing first on the road. Michael Belov finishing second on the road, but I think we will see Pietro Fittipaldi being classified as the race winner. Well, Fittipaldi, if he is classified as having won the race, that will be his first race win of the year. Jamie Chadwick will be classified in second place, just as she was in yesterday's race. So Jamie Chadwick, two second places so far this weekend. This is by far her best showing, and she's improved a lot as the season has gone on. Her two third-place finishes in Sepang last weekend, and now two second-place finishes. Jamie Chadwick getting faster and faster. She's going to continue in the W Series again this year in its second series, and she's also going to be deepening her role as a development driver for the Williams Formula One team. A lot of these young drivers eager to get to Formula One, the pinnacle of open wheel motorsport, and Jamie Chadwick already with a role with the Williams team, and she's going to be deepening her cooperation with Williams. It was announced earlier this year. So Jamie Chadwick, the British driver, another with uh, what looks like a bright future in motorsport. There is Ukio Sasahara. Uh, Ukio Sasahara, who finished first on the road. He's got his plans sorted for 2020 as well. He'll be competing in the Japanese Super GT Championship in the GT500 category. And those are some really powerful machines that Ukio Sasahara will be uh, handling this year in 2020. Japan, of course, a country with uh, a very rich history and tradition of motorsport. Ukio Sasahara and Yu Kanemaru, the two Japanese drivers competing in uh, the 2020 F3 Asian Championship. There is Sasahara. He knows all about winning in Asian F3 because he won last year's title. There he is, getting out of the car now. You get a good view when you get uh, up close to the cars there of the halo. That is the device that cocoons the driver and uh, helps protect them from any debris or any other incident on the track. He's also got the hands device around his neck there, and now that attaches to the helmet there. You can see the tethers at the back there, and it helps protect the driver from a, a head injury. It helps... Uh, it means that his head won't move too far forward or backward or side to side and helps reduce the risk of uh, whiplash and other neck injuries. That detaches there, and you can see he's giving us a nice demonstration there of just how that hands device attaches to the helmet. That's, of course, a very standard piece of motorsport safety equipment, having been introduced around about 20 years ago. The uh, Halo, a rather newer safety innovation, only coming in in the last few years, the last two or three years, but now Duriger across many forms of open-wheel motorsport. Sasahara receiving the congratulations of his team there. A nice big grin on his face. Of course, he's not eligible for points because he's a guest driver, but all these drivers, very competitive. They always want to win, always want to finish first. And Sasahara drove very well today, starting from second place, and then, of course, inheriting that win when Jack Doohan was so cruelly denied and it will be very interesting to hear from Joey Alders, who uh, finished fourth on the road, uh, fifth on the road, excuse me, but uh, will be classified third. He'll take the points for third place because Sasahara not eligible for points. There is Joey Alders receiving high fives from his team. And I should think he'll be very happy. A thumbs up from the Dutch driver there. And one champion to another, Ukio Sasahara, the outgoing champion. And Joey Alders, the Dutch driver, the new F3 Asian champion. He's not got his plans for 2020 sorted yet, aiming to race in Europe, but it's all dependent on financing, as it often is with motorsport. But he will certainly have done his chances absolutely no harm at all. He can now say that he's the F3 Asian champion, and that should help make him more attractive to potential teams and potential sponsors. And Jamie Chadwick, of course, finishing 
classified in second position. And Pietro Fittipaldi, his best showing of the season so far. He'll take the points for first place because he finished in second place and we'll be uh, hopefully hearing from the top finishers very shortly. So Joey Alders, the Dutch driver, the 2020 F3 Asian champion, and he's down there with Feline now. Let's hear what he's got to say. Wow, Joey, I don't know what to say. Like, uh, congratulations. Uh, you, after uh, Jack got retired, and you, you, became, you became the overall champion for 2020 season Formula 3 Asian Championship. Tell us. Yeah, uh, sounds quite okay, quite good. Uh, yeah, really happy with it. Uh, the final race, yeah, it's really, really uh, strange with the tyres uh, this weekend. Uh, but yeah, I had a, had a bad start. Uh, and I didn't want to win it back at the first lap, so just, uh, okay, I had a bad start, so I'm dealing with it. And then I saw the group battling. I thought, all right, let them battle. We know there's a, a tyre problem, so I'm just going to keep it easy. And then uh, the final five laps, I, I saved my tire, so I thought, all right, now I'm going to start pushing. Then I saw Duan uh, at, at a puncture again. Uh, I could feel my tires also start uh, vibrating as well. So, yeah, it's, it gets in your head. The tires just can't explode. So it's quite, kind of difficult, but this race was just a championship race, not a race for the win. Uh, just had to finish it, and uh, that's what I did. So uh, happy with, uh, with the result in the end. So all good. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. 那么刚刚我问到周易呢，他提到他这场比赛呢是呃发车的时候没有一个很好的发车，所以掉到了第五位。那么之后呢，他就一直在观察前面的一些一些争斗，而且他一直是保持了自己的轮胎一个比较好的状态。他也呃虽然呢他是完赛了，但是实际上并没有拿到呃。并没有拿到前三名的成绩，不过呢，他还是拿到，因为积分榜的积分状况呢，他拿到了这个整二零二零赛季国际青年亚洲三级方程式锦标赛的总冠军。那么这个这个成绩应该已经决定了。呃，不过他对他说呢，他对自己目前的成绩还是非常满意的。拜拜。Well, congratulations to Joey Alders, the new champion. For the 2020 F3 Asian Championship season, commiserations to Jack Doohan, who drove absolutely fantastically all weekend, but ultimately it wasn't to be. But uh, Jack Doohan, still just 17 years of age, I should think he's impressed a huge amount of people with his approach to racing, not just this weekend, but all season long. He's won five races and clearly still has a very bright future in motorsport. Pietro Fittipaldi, there, his car standing behind the number one board, so confirmation that Pietro Fittipaldi will be classified as the winner of this race. That is his first win of the 2020 F3 Asian Championship season, and that will help him in his private battle for fourth place in the championship with Jamie Chadwick. Nikita Mazepin will be uh, still in third place, and with Jack Doohan not scoring any points. In fact, Mazepin now uh, closes up on Jack Doohan. So Mazepin still with a... Uh, a slight chance of overhauling Jack Doohan, but uh, it does appear as if Mazepin, with just one race of the season left, will be finishing the 2020 F3 Asian Championship in third position. So that is Fittipaldi's first win of the season, and uh, a very nice way to end the year. He had a pretty rotten start to the season, failed to score points in any of the first three races at Sepang after some... Uh, bad luck and all sorts of problems and then round two the three races in Dubai didn't go much better but since then he's been a very consistent point scorer he's uh, in the last eight races he's not finished lower than fifth Pietro Fittipaldi so it'll be Fittipaldi Chadwick and Alders on the podium and let's see them enjoy themselves there now Ladies and gentlemen, we're now having the podium ceremony for 2020 Formula 3 Asian Championship certified by FIA race 14. Now let's welcome our winning drivers onto the podium. Winner of race 14, car number 21, Pinata Motorsport, Techo Fittipaldi. Second place, number 15 from Absolute Greasy, Jenny. Third place, 
So after another dramatic race here at the Chang International Circuit in Buriram, Ukiyo Sasahara crossing the line first, but the guest driver status of the Japanese driver means that Pietro Fittipaldi classified as the race winner here this morning. Jamie Chadwick classified in second place and Joey Alders classified in third position. And that means that Joey Alders is the 2020 F3 Asian champion. Bitter disappointment for Jack Doohan, the young Australian driver, who was leading the race but suffered a puncture and that allowed Joey Alders to come through and score enough points to be crowned champion. We still have this afternoon's race to go, race 15 of 15 in this 2020 F3 Asian Championship season. And that will come later on this afternoon. Next up, we'll have the press conference and we will hear from Fittipaldi, Chadwick and the new champion, Joey Alders, with all the cars just being pushed back into their blocks now. No time to rest for the teams and drivers because there's still plenty of racing to happen this weekend. 
That is the number 44 car of Paul Wong just being pushed in. Paul Wong finishing behind Thomas Ludi in the Masters category. So Thomas Ludi extending his lead over Paul Wong. There's still plenty to play for in the Masters category. The 57 car there of Michael Belov, the Russian driver classified in fifth position. In fact, he would have been second, but uh, was given a 10 second penalty for uh, ignoring track limits. And of course, it is very easy to go over the white line there and onto the runoff area. And the stewards taking a dim view of Belov doing that and slapping him with a 10 second penalty. So Belov classified down in fifth place, but uh, a very competitive drive from the Russian driver. Some fantastic racing going around the inside, going around the outside. And he's certainly showing that uh, when it comes to wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat, Belov very much up there with the best. This is his first appearance of the 2020 F3 Asian Championship season. So Belov not in the championship running, but uh, clearly keen to show what he's made of. And I'm sure he will be keen to show that again in this afternoon's race, race 15, the last race of the year. And Joey Alders, the Dutch driver, of course, the new champion after another piece of bitter disappointment for Jack Doohan, the 17-year-old leading the race, but then suffering a puncture and finishing well down the order. So plenty more racing here at the Chang International Circuit in Buriram. A lovely day here. No danger of any rain like we saw in Sepang and like we saw much to our surprise in Dubai, where it doesn't rain very often at all. Here in Thailand, brilliant sunshine, and that's going to continue on this afternoon when we have race 15. 600 kilometers northeast of the capital, Bangkok, this Chang International Circuit. There you see not much in the way of elevation change. It's pretty flat, but uh, certainly produces some good racing as we saw this morning, as we saw yesterday, and as we will hopefully see later on this afternoon. Now it's time for the press conference, and we'll hear from Pietro Fittipaldi, Jamie Chadwick, and the new champion, Joey Alders.
phase two, around five in the Euro, congratulations to the Euro winners. Uh, here we're starting with you, uh, first time in the top set. Uh, tell us about your race and uh, how did you do it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was an exciting race. I mean, we started fifth and uh, had a really good start. Um, I think Jamie had a good start as well, and uh, I was right behind her uh, after the start. I got a good toe. I was able to pass her down into turn three. Then after that, it was, um, you know, we were battling for P3, P4. Um, Jack obviously had a failure, and then I knew Belov was behind me, had a 10-second penalty, so I didn't fight with him too much. And I knew if I, uh, you know, just conserve my, my tires and make sure they lasted the whole race, uh, we were going to get a good result. And at the end, we came out with the win. So I'm really happy with that. It took a while. It took almost the whole season to finally get the win. Um, when we started uh, this uh, championship, it was quite difficult in the beginning. Um, we had a lot of issues, but we, we overcame them. And we came out here with a goal, and we accomplished that goal. And we uh, got a win at the end, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Thanks. Jamie, congratulations. Yeah, I'm not too sure how I ended up here, to be honest, especially yeah, even to get second place. Um, yeah, a bit baffled by the last few laps, but yeah, it was a busy race for me. Um, we had good pace all the way through, um, fighting with Pietro for most of the race uh, on his rear, uh, rear for most of the race, and then uh, I knew Belov had a new tyre on, so it was hard to keep him behind. Uh, fortunately, he had a 10-second penalty, so that gave us... Um, another position, and then obviously Jack's issue gave us another one, and then yeah, obviously found ourselves up here. So yeah, I'm a bit lucky, but um, hopefully yeah, we can have a good afternoon and take a few more more podiums. Thank you very much, Joey. Congratulations on third. Uh, I think you've won the championships. Tell us about the, your season and uh, about winning the championship. Uh, yeah, so the season uh, I think overall just went very well. We just had really consistency. Uh, out of now the 14 races, uh, missed three podiums, uh, so 11 podiums. So we just had a, cons a consistent season, and I think that's just uh, the key uh, for a good championship. So big thanks to the team, uh, to the engineers, Josh Evans, uh, Mihai Marinescu, uh, and, uh, and my, and my uh, mechanics, uh, Lee Torrey. So just amazing job on uh, giving me a good car for this whole season. Uh, really happy with that. Uh, and yeah, this season I think it's really fair racing. If I'm not mistaken, we didn't have any first lap incidents, so I don't think many uh, championships can say that as well. So it's really fun to drive this championship. Uh, and then yeah, the race um, had, a, had, a, had a bad start. I think the worst start of the whole season. So uh, and yeah, there was mostly a race for uh, the championship, not a race for the win. So I was uh, behind the, the pack, uh, four, four, five cars in front. Uh, I saw them. Back uh, we know their uh, tires. Uh, we have a tire problem, so I was re really uh, careful with the tires. Uh, the first half of the race, then I saw them battling, so I uh, start pushing a bit to close the gap. Uh, then I saw Jack had an, had a had the tire problem again, and from there on, just bring it home, no pushing. So I backed off from uh, Jamie uh, and just finished the race. So uh, really happy with that, uh, and uh, yeah, all good. Thank you. Thank you very much.